Here are the Rails as a movie did so much for Thomas that changed the show forever. This was the first time Thomas was made to full CGI, unless you want to count that stinky cheese episode that got CGI for testing reasons. But this was the first one to be released. It was also the first movie to have a steam engine as an antagonist. For a while, it was considered to be the best Thomas movie. I mean, when his rival movies at the time were like Tatamar and Misty Island Rescue, you know, it makes a lot of sense why this would be considered the best. This movie was just such a nice story about helping Hero and a villain whose intentions were like a little weird wanting to kill Hero, but Bro apologized at the end, and Hero is the nicest guy ever and forgives him. And it doesn't really make too much sense sometimes, but it's just really good. To make you feel old, Here the Rails is gonna be 14 years old soon. <laughs> yeah, I also feel old. But with such a good movie, you can only watch it a total of like 230 times before you either move on with your life or try to live in denial and think, how can I experience this story again, but in a new way? Well, I got some news for you because Hero the Rails got three games. Yeah, that's right. Only two of them you can still play, but like, you did get three. So, better start building that time machine to play the third one. Now, usually about like Thomas games, I would say like, the official Thomas games are actually pretty bad. Scrap. And the fan ones are the ones that are good, but I'm not going to talk about that. Because these games are actually pretty solid. So with that all out of the way, well, let's talk about the Hero of the Rails games. <laughs> Here are the Rails Wii and DS, developed by Superball Studios and published by Barnstorm Games. It's a game that you might be wondering like why you haven't seen people talk about, especially the Wii version. That's because this game was only released in the European Union and Oceania. Weirdly not released in America though, or Canada, and the Wii one wasn't released in the UK. I don't know why that is, it's just really strange. But if you played Here are the Rails on DS and somehow managed to get a copy, you'd be able to play it, unlike the Wii version, which is region locked. So for most people, they have played the DS version, and when they saw the Wii version, they went like, No way! Here are the Rails DS is getting a remaster on the Wii! Both versions of the game were released, I think, at the same time. I'm not too sure about that. But it's very clear that the Wii version is the one that they made first, or based the DS one off of. Because the DS one has, like, that vibe of being made second. Like, you can just tell from playing the first game that, like, yeah, the DS one's definitely a downgrade. And yeah, they definitely used assets from the Wii one because no way they made DS assets look this good on the Wii. But since this is just basically the same game, I'm just gonna talk about both of them and cover like both of them at once because it's just a port to a handheld. But like there's some differences that like make it worth talking about both versions. So the game itself has three game options. You have the story, games, and karaoke. The karaoke is just Go Go Thomas, which might not sound fun, but it has brought me some amazing go -go. memories. The DS version lacks this karaoke though, so like it's an immediate 0 out of 10. Out of all these little selection things, let's just start off with the games. Point at the part with the Wii Remote to weld it in place. The games we have the fixing game, snap, shunting, pairs, painting, racing, washing, and sorting. Fixing game just has us fix Hero and give him all the parts he needs. We get this really cool welding tool that I think is really cool. Well, that is for the Wii version on the DS. We do not get a tool. That kind of sucks. The snap game is just having cards flip over and then pressing A or tapping the touch screen to take a picture of a pair. And it's just like, eh. The shunting game is actually pretty fun. You just go and then you have to stop just before you hit the line so that way the truck can make it in the middle and it will be green or yellow if you missed it. Oh boy, why are there so many of these? Pairs is just another matching game. Cool thing about the DS version of this game though is that once you get a match, they go on the top of the screen. I wish that was in like all the matching games. If I'm gonna go through torture, I might as well go through well-organized torture. Sorting is a game that'll probably be pretty fun unless you're colorblind. If you're colorblind, this game is just impossible. You have to sort the objects in the right crate with the right color of the engine. If you do it right, you can make Victor and Kevin happy, but if you don't, you can make them sad. I messed up this part on purpose on the DS version, and I think Kevin honestly took this one personally. I'm sorry, Kevin. I mean, I meant to make you sad, but like, now I feel bad. Washing game is probably the best game where you get to clean engines. Well, really, engine is really just Thomas. It starts off with Thomas being so dirty, so then we wash him with a sponge. 
and then we get to spray him down with this cool little hose, and then we get to dry him with his really cool blow dryer. Also, if you try to wash or dry his face, Thomas takes it personally and looks super shocked, like no one's ever done this before. For the DS version, Thomas flat out doesn't care, I guess he just got used to it from the Wii version? Cleaning in the DS version, the sponge, hose, and cloth? I guess the blow dryer was just too powerful for the DS. They will all move like super fast, which is honestly kind of funny. We are either dedicated to this job, unlike the Wii version, or we don't want to be here any longer, which is why we are doing this as fast as possible. The racing game is where you just race against Percy, and it has a nice minimap to keep track of where you are, unless you are playing the DS version, which is just gone! It's fine, I just wish that... I could have had more of a variety of racers to race against, honestly. Just being able to race as Thomas and against Percy, it's like, what about getting to race as like Emily or a hero or against Spencer? It's fine. I mean, it's just like a mini game. You'll probably play it like twice and then give up. The paint game? Oh. Close your eyes, kids. Thomas is naked. You just get to paint Thomas and polish him. It's cool. For the game section, I think that the better version of like this whole game would have to be the Wii one. It just looks better, and it has a blow dryer, so immediate 10 out of 10. On the DS version, we do get to see above the games for most of them, which is like neat, but also so pointless. Like, what are you gonna do with this information? Like, oh, I can see the Steamworks roof now? I guess that's cool, I didn't realize how tall it was. How does this enhance the game? I, I mean, I guess it does because the two screens thing, but like, I don't get it. But. If you are not a fan of motion controls, the DS version is definitely superior, but just game-wise, go with the Wii one. But you know what? Maybe the DS version will be superior on like the story elements, so let's look at that. The story, it makes a lot more sense when you actually have watched the movie. They explain all these parts you need to know for the game, but it just feels like really rushed. Without seeing the film, I can see this making kids just ask a lot of questions, but if you have seen the movie, which most people playing this game probably have, it's nice to go through the entire movie again, but without having to like actually watch the entire movie again. Like, making it this short was actually really nice. Something interesting when it comes to both versions of the game is that this version uses still images, which you might just think that was for the DS's hardware, but I bet it could have run some clips of the movie because it can handle Metroid Prime Hunter CGI cutscenes pretty well, so I don't know why they just did this. But the Wii version it uses footage from the movie, but notice something off? They, um, they put a PNG over their mouths so that way the engines will never talk. And the reason why is because the engines don't actually talk in this game. It's only the narrator speaking. The narrator of this game, David Holt, does a great job for narration. Hero was enjoying being a really useful engine, but he still felt sad. He missed his home. I think that he really fits this game. Now when it comes to the games being tied into the story, it's basically just the same as the game selection, but with characters at different locations, and you get to race against and as different characters throughout the game. You can also just drive around, and I just wish this was a feature of the game. This game is honestly a pretty game. While the engine models can look, oh gosh, hey Percy. <laughs> bad. The backgrounds look straight up from like a CGI episode. We even get Great Waterton in this game. You would never think that the only CGI appearance of Great Waterton is in the Hero of the Rails Wii and DS game. Now I would say the same thing about the DS game, which I would have backed the backgrounds because yeah, they're, they're the exact same, but the models in this game are just crazy low detail, which is to be expected with a port to a less powerful console. Most of them you really wouldn't be able to tell, which is honestly really cool. But Spencer just absolutely has it the worst of all of them. He just looks so bad, it's not even passable. Now probably the weird thing about this DS port is that I would say that Emily's model in this game actually looks better than the Wii one. The Wii one is just so off, but the DS one, while being less detailed, actually has a better face and like feels like has better proportions, so. I'll give it credit there. That's kind of it for the story. Out of both versions of this game, I would say that the Wii version is definitely superior. It's mainly for the cutscenes and visuals, but if you absolutely hate motion controls with your entire existence, then the DS version is a solid pick. 
don't think that the Wii version is the superior version by that much. It just does things that make it slightly better than the DS one. The DS port was really well made though, especially in the era of console games going to get ports to handhelds being like a completely different experience compared to the original game. Like, let's give this game some credit. They actually made the console game on a handheld. Like, look at any of those old ported handheld games. Like, that's just not what you would get. Now, you might think that's it for the game, and I can finally talk about the mobile version of the game, but no. There is more content I have not talked about, so it is time to talk about. Yeah, that's right. There is content that didn't make into the final game. Thanks to the cutting room floor, we know a lot about this. Starting off with the boring one, legal screen that is unused has a copyright from 2009, unlike the 2010 one used in the game. Okay, I promise the rest will not be that boring. Apparently somewhere in the game, the classic Thomas theme was also just going to be used, which would have just been pretty weird. Just having a CGI Thomas game with the classic theme would have just felt very off to me. Maybe it was a placeholder? I don't know. According to the Thomas Wiki, Ari, Bert, Rosie, Harold, Stanley, and the legendary character Billy were planned to be in the game, but we're all cut. Rosie even had some dialogue apparently. And in this one scene, Ari and Mavis's horn and Stanley's whistle can be heard in this cutscene where the engines agree to help Hero, but only in the Wii version. So was Mavis going to be in the game too? And then finally, we got the best thing ever. The placeholder audio for different languages. Dutch. Wah, 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 wah. French. Wah, 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 wah. Italian. Wah, 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 wah. I love these so much. And wait a minute, is that American? American. Get off your horse and drink your milk. Well, if you say so. I spilled my milk. Well, that is it for the unused and scrap content of this game. Now, I think it's time that we move on to the... The Hero of the Rails app, or the Hero of the Rails mobile game, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. It's developed by Callaway Digital Arts, and it's basically just lost media at this point. I can't get this thing anywhere. I have looked. I have asked people if they could get the app and then screen record the entire thing, but no one could. So I'm going to have to use this like one video that has the story, this person showing how it works while recording their iPad with a camera, and the trailer that the Thomas YouTube has for the game. This game is basically just a lot of like little games. Like this was early iPad era, so we gotta keep in mind like the games are basically gonna just be like puzzles and learning and reading, like just dumb educational stuff. There's stuff to do in the game. You can do the story mode, you can do puzzles, and you can even do a matching game. Yay. And you can color some pictures, which honestly I probably would have found fun as a kid. I used to do those all the time. The story is actually not that bad. You can click on stuff, but not a lot, which makes it feel kind of weird. I love this part where Hero screams though. No! Hero. Now, I'm not going to talk about the matching game or the color one because there really isn't much to say. Now, there really isn't anything to say about this game besides that the story isn't bad. It's just not like a whole lot of a game. It's just early iPad game. Not much to it. But that will be it for the Hero of the Rails games. A good movie with some good games. Now, honestly, I had a lot of fun with this, and I recommend that you go check out the Hero of the Rails Wii in DS and the mobile game if you still have access to that. If you do, please screen record it. That will be it for me. And thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. It would really help me out. Goodbye, everyone.